Hello and thank you for joining us here at Cisco Kits, which is now Certification Kits. My name is Corinne Archibald and today we'll be discussing configuring IP addresses on switches and routers. Let's begin. Alright, let's go ahead and talk about putting IP address configurations on a switch. And I think the first question that most people have is why would you do that? Why would you get, give a Layer 2 device an IP address? Well, remember, you may want to tell net into the device and manage it, or you may want to ping the device to test connectivity with it. So it's got to have an IP address in order for you to do those things. But don't think that the IP address is associated with any one of its ports. By default, those ports are layer 2 ports. They would not have an IP address on them, and there's really no way to do that on a regular layer 2 switch. So this is more of a virtual interface within the switch. Alright, so let's go ahead and take a look at the commands necessary to give the switch its management IP address. Notice we're starting off here in global config mode and now I'm going to type in interface VLAN 1. This is that place within the switch that we said is a virtual place. We really can't associate that with any one port. And now we're going to type in IP address 192.168.2.2 200 for example might be this switch's IP address and it would have a subnet mask just like any other IP device. And you also have to issue the no shut command if it is, has uh, never been issued before on this interface the interface would be shut down just like any other interface. So now that the interface is on and it has an IP address it could be uh, telneted to or pinged from within its own subnet. Now the reason I say from within its own subnet is that if you tried to ping it from a different subnet it would have a little trouble replying to you. Why? Because it needs a default gateway. This switch is not a router. Uh, it does not interface multiple networks or anything like that and it, it doesn't operate the same way as a router so it, you have to compare it to a host if you want to think about uh, things from its perspective in order for it to, to get it out of its own network it needs a default gateway. So the command to give it its default gateway is IP default dash gateway and the IP address of the default gateway which is its router. So 192.168 let's just say it's 2.1 that's all you have to type in and you hit enter and now it would be able to reply to pings on another subnet or be telneted to from a different subnet and be able to successfully return the traffic. Alright, very good. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the output of a basic show run command on a router and focus on the IP configurations of the interfaces there. As you can see there's only one interface here, Ethernet 0, that actually has an IP address and it's also been issued the no shut command. We can see that because it doesn't have the word shut down under the interface. So we're going to go in and, and do similar configurations on Ethernet 1 and we'll give it an IP address of 192.168.2.1. So the first thing we want to do is to get into global configuration mode. And we type in config t. Once we're there we can go into the exact interface that we want to configure which is Ethernet 1. So interface Ethernet 1 and then we type in IP address and 192.168.2.1 we must also give it a subnet mask we'll do a basic class C and we're going to issue the no shut command which the full command is actually no shut down and you can see that it changed its state to up. Once we've done that we can go ahead and exit out and we'll do a show run to verify that our configurations are correct. Now notice we didn't really give the interface a default gateway the way we talked about doing so with a switch. Uh, you don't really give a router's interface a default gateway. Remember that a router has or may have several next top routers that it can forward traffic to depending on the destination traf the destination address that they're forwarding to. They may also have a gateway of last resort configured and that is similar to the concept of a default gateway. It basically means that if no uh, route in the routing table matches the destination IP address they will always forward things to the gateway of last resort. And We'll cover that a bit more in another CCNA study topic. 
So here, under the show run output, we see Interface Ethernet 1 now has an IP address of 192.168.2.1. And it does not have shutdown underneath it, so that means that it, it took the no shut command. All right, let's also take a moment to discuss uh, DNS resolution and the fact that routers can take advantage of that. In global config mode, we can actually use a command uh, called IP name dash server and give the router the IP address of a server that will provide uh, name to IP address resolution. So 192.168, let's just say it was 1.200. In the example that we just gave where we configured the router with a name server, you may find yourself having to type in the command that you see here prior to that, which is IP domain lookup. This turns on the ability of the router to resolve names using a name server. It is on by default, and so the only reason you would have to type that in is if it had been turned off at some point using the no IP domain lookup command. Oftentimes, people will type in the no IP domain lookup command because they don't like the default behavior of their device when in privileged mode they type, they actually have a typo and the router thinks they're trying to tell net to a device with that name so it begins to try to resolve what they've typed in to an IP address. So it goes out to this default IP address of a name server which is 255, 255, 255, 255 and that is if a name server has not been configured with the commands that we're seeing here. So you want to understand for your CCNA exam that IP domain lookup enables resolution through a name server and no IP domain lookup takes away that capability. Also you understand that there are two options for name resolution and that a router will first search its own host table and then will look for uh, resolution at a name server when a name is typed in. For example when somebody's telnetting or pinging. The host table that is on every device by default can be populated using the IP host command. The IP host command allows you to type in a word that would be the name of a device and then the IP address of that device. To see the host table you can always type in show hosts. We hope that you found this video to be of use and that it helps you prepare for your CCNA certification exam. We are sure that you will find over time that the best way to cement the CCNA topics is to have real-world hands-on experience. For more information on how you can obtain affordable Cisco equipment to study for your exam or for more of these valuable CCNA study topics, please visit us at www.ciscokits.com.